Hello again, and uh, as you can see, I'm back in my workshop. Um, it's been a little while, but uh, I'm finally here dealing with some uh, so, some more beefier um, repairs than I have been in the past. Um, it's now uh, getting towards the end of March, um, and we're all looking forward to easing of measures, I, I suppose. Um, well, we are, definitely. Um, the piece of kit I've got on the bench behind me here is something I've been sitting on for a number of years and been loath to have a look at. There are some things I love repairing, radios, stereo amplifiers, hi-fi equipment, record decks um, and, and all sorts of other electronics. But there are some things you think, I'm going to be at my comfort zone on this and this is one of those items. It's uh, um, an AVO Volve tester uh, made by um, the AVO uh, company um, known as the Automatic Coil Winder and Electrical Equipment Limited in the day. Um, and this one was uh, made somewhere around 1938 to 1939. Um, I don't know very much about valve testers. I have used them many, many years ago. Um, sometimes with good results, sometimes with not so good results, uh, and they can be a bit fiddly to use. This one is quite a comprehensive one, and I do have with it all the documentation. And this book um, deals not only with all the volumes you may want to test, and um, you can't see it now, I'll give you a close-up later, but it also gives all the settings um, that you have to put these control this, this um, switch on for the various volumes comes in two parts. This part is the meter itself and this part um, where, where you set the anode voltage, um, uh, grid bias and uh, screen grid and all the rest of it up in heater voltage and this one contains all the various volt bases um, which are switchable. Um, and by selecting the volve you need and setting up the switch combinations uh, you should be able to test it for emission uh, and other problems. But this is all very well and good but when they go wrong where do you start? Well the circuit diagram, and I'll show you that a bit closer in a, mi a minute, um, uh, is is basically just a lot of wires interconnected to different to 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 a large transformer which provides different voltages um, to different parts of the valve, and um, it's uh, one of those things that if you have a fault on it, um, where do you start? Are they the basic ones like um, uh, the, you know the, the fuse is gone or the transformer is not working? Um, but this one. Uh, I've got an awful feeling that there's something more elusive with it and uh, therefore as I said earlier I'm slightly out of my comfort zone especially if it doesn't work and especially if um, I, uh, I have to uh, start doing some more in-depth research into why it's not working. I guess it's a matter of lots and lots of voltage checks um, on, on the machine. Well that's what I'm going to be looking at. Um, so Without any more ado, let's get started. My first job here is to uh, have a look inside it and see if there's anything radical like things burnt and disconnected or anything like that. So let's have a, a look at that now and um, then we'll get back to uh, what I'm going to do next. So let's get going. Well, the instrument was relatively easy to get out of its case, uh, secured all around the outside. The only problem I had with it, with it was uh, there's a rubber seal that um, goes between the metal case uh, and the uh, and the lid uh, of the um, Bakelite uh, top, and that I didn't want to damage, um, but I managed to get the top off. Um, and inside, uh, you can see what you would expect to see from a well-built able instrument. Um, lots and lots of wires, two main transformers. There's one there. Uh, and the other one um, is on the other side. Let's move over to that. You can see that one. Um, lots of interconnecting wires. The large meter movement in the center. Uh, there's the magnet for it. Move up a little bit to see the magnet. Um, 
and lots and lots of interconnecting wires, lots and lots of switching underneath, but generally uh, quite a well-made instrument um, and uh, absolutely packed with wiring. Moving on to the switch, uh, the, the, the valve base unit, um, it's a bit of a, a frightening thing to look at really. Um, it's a tangle of wire. Um, all the valve bases interconnected. No doubt each of these wires has a code for different voltages and different parts of the, uh, uh, the circuit they go to. And at the top of it you see the selector switch. I'll just move in a little bit on that. Um, and there's the selector switch which uh, you set according to the information given to you in the valve manual. These two together um, should allow you to be able to test valves. Now um, I don't know when this was last powered up uh, um, but I'm going to attempt to power it up in a few minutes and see what actually happens. Um, I'll put it on half power or low protect first and then after we've done that I'll um, turn it on and then place a valve in it and see exactly what happens. Okay so that's the, um, that's the machine plugged in. I've done some basic uh, continuity and um, magger checks to make sure there's no desperate shorts on it. So what we're going to do now is turn the machine on. There's an ECH um, uh, ECH81 in the in the in the valve holder. Everything is plugged in. I've got the correct anode volt set up, and I've got the correct heater volt set up. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just about ready now to to start to turn it on. So let's see what happens. I'm going to keep a close eye on the actual needle, and I'm going to keep a close ear out for any bangs and a close nose out for any smells. So let's turn it on. I've turned it on and nothing at all. Oh well, to be expected I suppose. Let's turn the light out and see if there's any heater volts showing. Now nothing lighting up at all on the valve, um, which is a bit, uh, a bit sad. Let me just try and see if the zero works or anything works there at all. No. There's nothing working at all on that valve. It's definitely on and uh, I've got absolutely nothing. Um, I think I might have to check to see whether I've got um, AC volts going into the thing. Um, but apart from that, <laughs> I'm a bit stymied at the moment. So let's um, let's turn it all off, and I'll uh, I'll turn it over. So let's just check to see if I've got um, volts going into it. I'll turn it back on again. Careful not to electrocute myself here. I'm not used to working on these things. I'll put my meter. I go to 600 volts AC, um, and uh, let's see if we get anything on the meter. Let's turn it on again. At least I know where the the mains goes into it, so I can check on that. At least, so we've got um, the mains cable there, there. Oh, something's happening. I don't want to blow anything up here. Um, yeah, the meter is reading 230 volts. So I've got 230 volts going into the machine. Um, whether we've got anything coming out at all, I don't know. I suppose it's, it's reference to ground, so let's check. Um, right, it's going to be a bit like a needle in a haystack trying to trying to work this because I've no idea where the um, where the outputs are coming from this transformer. It's just a question of uh, 
I presume these are the ah probably down here are the outputs right, let me just try one or two nothing 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 um, so I don't know I it's, and unless I I've got an idea what the circuit is what the circuit looks like I mean I have got a circuit diagram but there's absolutely no reference points on it at all uh, as to uh, what voltages I should be getting or where I find those points because nothing is marked on it um, oh dear uh, my worst nightmare I think so what I'm going to have to do I, uh, is to um, take the circuit with me and some photographs and try and work out exactly uh, what's missing what voltages should be there that are not there hello and good morning um, yeah I've got a different jumper on because it's the next day and uh, I do change my clothes occasionally you know um, what a difference a day makes or an evening makes um, last night I did quite a lot of research on this Volve tester and uh, I um, I actually went online and looked for um, circuit diagrams and I found an absolutely brilliant logical one and it was produced, drawn by David Williams in September 2011 um, btnet.com and uh, I will show it to you in detail later but it explains all the uh, wiring um, and uh, on of the Vol tester and even gives illustrated connections um, I don't know if you can see that I'll, again I'll give you a close-up of that uh, illustrated connections of all the uh, cables uh, and transformers within the device um, so now I can actually start to fault find on it I did notice yesterday when I turned it on uh, again the needle of the uh, of the meter actually went negative and started to vibrate like mad. I turned it off very quickly, so I didn't want to damage it, but I don't know quite why that happened. But there is power on it. Um, I also managed to I, I also loaded up this CD, which someone had which I had with the Volve tester actually um, uh, when it was uh, loaned to me um, uh, many years ago. And on this CD, which I believe cost, it's still available online, it costs £10, it's all the data that you could find in this book. So that, oh, thing's broken. So that all the, um, all the valves, all the reference numbers and all the keypad numbers that you could, that you need for the valve tester are on there, together with lots of other information. For instance, all the um, valve bases are on there as well. So that was a really useful find. Um, and also instructions for using the valve tester. Now I'm going to familiarize, familiarize myself with those because um, it tells you exactly how to use the valve tester and what everything does. So that's good. And uh, instructions about the valve tester and circuit diagrams. The circuit diagrams are okay but they're not as good as the ones that I found online, not as good as those, um, but they are there. So I've now got a circuit diagram, I've got the user manual, I've got the um, the, the, uh, the, the uh, details of all the of, of the wiring um, inside and uh, I've got a resource disk which which I'm really pleased about. So what more could you want? It now comes down to fault finding to find out if the thing is working or um, why the meter is going negative and stuff like that. Oh, one other thing, I even found on the disc the original 1936 patent specification for the uh, valve tester and it says an improved method and apparatus for testing radio valves um, application date August the 25th 1936 uh, patent number 2364 uh, stroke 36 complete specification August the 9th 1937 and uh, I haven't printed all of it out because there's about 22 pages of it but um, got that as well just out of interest um, so 
yeah, everything's looking good. And then I also found something else of interest. When this tester was first available in 1936, it cost £12.12. 12 shillings. Now I've done a few calculations and in today's money that's between £879 and uh, £1,000 depending on what data you use. So quite an expensive piece of kit in that in 1936. So only used probably by professionals and people um, uh, who are uh, uh, doing you know detailed examination of valves and their, their uh, characteristics. So there we go. Um, I can't do any more on this video because the next stage of the investigation is going to be um, to uh, do voltage checks um, and uh, actually trace things through using the, um, the diagrams that I've got here and find out what's going wrong. Why the meter is going negative and fluttering, I don't know. If anyone does know anything about this, please let me know. Or indeed, if anyone can contribute to the um, use and, and uh, repair uh, or any common faults that you may have come across on this valve tester, I would also be enormously uh, uh, grateful to you if, you if you would let me know so I can work on it slow time. So I think that's it. That's going to be about it for this video. Um, it's going to be terribly boring for you to watch me doing voltage checks stage by stage and continuity checks. Um, what I have found is that uh, the, the actual selector switch and that jumble of wiring on the valve base isn't actually that complicated. It's just that all the valves are duplicated uh, with their heaters and their um, anodes and their cathodes and their screen grids and their um, everything else that's on the valve. Um, and uh, it's all wire color coded but it actually ends up, on, um, as you will see when I show you this in detail, in just nine wires going into the selector switch which goes on to the uh, valve tester proper. So um, I don't want to wrap it on anymore. I think you've heard enough about me and the, and the valve tester um, but uh, it's the last item I've actually got to look at so I'm going to take my time over it and um, then I will put another short video together um, if I've got feedback uh, or if I get anywhere uh, with finding out what could be wrong with it. So um, thank you very much for bearing with me during this bit of a protracted video. Um, and uh, I'm now going to uh, have some lunch. Um, I've got some bread to, to bake. I'm doing sourdough at the moment. Uh, that's all ready now to go in the oven. And then I'm, what am I going to do? I might just give this a couple of hours later on today. But maybe uh, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be back with you um, with a progress report on fault finding this AVO uh, valve tester. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, take care.